there is a real risk that these tools can make our work harder. What are the risks in AI? So, I, you know, I, I don't think either of us would be here if we didn't believe in technology and that it's going to be a good thing. And people talk about the, the risks. But let's break that down into kind of two categories here. So what are the risks in using AI from like a patient clinical perspective? And then what are the risks on more of kind of a system basis? Like what do we need to manage to make sure that we're actually able to take advantage of, of this new tech? Yeah, I mean, that's that's great. I think um, the history of technology, um, not only in healthcare, but everywhere shows that with new technologies, we reap some benefits and there's usually a bite back or an unintended consequence. And, um, you know, there's some negative, there's a side effect. And um, there's certainly potential side effects of AI, just like we've seen with kind of the internet, uh, modern digital technologies, electronic health records, certainly, I think major net benefit, but there are certainly aspects of it that um, have not been beneficial. So, um, you know, when it comes to AI, I think there are a, are a host of potential risks on, you know, on one hand, there's kind of a lot of the technical risks we discuss, things like um, hallucinations, which are not just um, positive hallucinations, like making things up. But what about not surfacing things that should be surfaced? Like, I think a lot about that. That's an under discussed area. Um, there's, you know, we talk about privacy concerns um, uh, and, you know, just introducing errors and perpetuating um, biases from the data into practice, right? Just kind of encoding that. So I think those are the ones that I think initially come to mind for when we have these discussions. But I, th I think about a lot of um, maybe more theoretical risks. But um, for instance, um, what's the risk that AI makes our jobs, our work harder, right? There's this assumption that AI will offload drudgery and kind of, you know, let's give, give us superpowers so we could do more easier. We could, we could function, we could perform higher with less effort or with equal effort. Um, there's no guarantee though, Mika, about that. And if you look back at the history of technology, um, there have been many promises um, that technology would make lives easier. Um, for instance, um, promises of a 30 hour work week that Keynes made in the 1930s. For instance, um, Betty Friedan, who is, uh, wrote this, this groundbreaking book, uh, the, uh, the Feminine Mystique, um, wrote in the 1960s how the average American housewife is actually spending more time working on her home uh, than her grandmother did, despite things like washing machines and dryers and dishwashers. Um, so I think we need to be careful um, and recognize the risk that while these tools are incredible and hopefully we will harness them for good and to make our patients' lives better and also healthcare workers' lives better, there is a real risk that these tools can make our work harder. So that's one thing that I think we don't talk enough about. Um, another risk I think we don't talk enough about is these tools are great for cognitive tasks, right? I mean, these these tools are great for retrieving information, for summarizing information, for helping with clinical reasoning, all fantastic. Um, but what happens to our critical thinking skills if we don't use them? Um, what happens to if we're not writing notes anymore because we're all using scribes? And if writing a note, I believe, is part of the clinical reasoning process, not to over glamorize it or over romanticize it, but there is an element to writing a good note. Um, if we're no longer writing notes that way, are we offloading our critical thinking? Um, if we're no longer summarizing information ourselves and we're relying on the Cliff Notes version, maybe we're getting enough, but maybe we're not getting a fuller picture and really wrestling with the information in a way um, that uh, makes us think. So I think that's a second one. Um, and then a third one that I'm particularly concerned about is what does it do to our relationships? Um, what, what medicine fundamentally is a relationship activity, right? We, um, we're in relationship with our patients. We're in relationship with our peers and other teammates. We're in relationship in many ways with ourselves and the activities of getting through the day. And how does AI modulate and affect those relationships? For instance, if you send me a, a message, Mika, and you, 
you want to hear back from me as your doctor. You don't want to hear back from a bot pretending to be me. Um, and um, I do worry that, um, you know, we're all going to have our bots reading our messages and replying for, you know, same emails, staff messages, not just patient messages. And so much of what we do is about signaling that we actually care enough to put the time in to do something. And um, if we take the easy route and just kind of offload things to machines, we may tarnish relationships. So um, long-winded answer, I think there's certainly the risks we all talk about, you know, privacy, reliability, hallucinations, et cetera. But um, I think the risks we're not talking about is A, one, what if this makes our work paradoxically harder? Two, what about our critical thinking skills? And three, how do we protect our uh, precious relationships with each other? Fascinating. I love the last point about the relationships. That's actually, I, I think, something I hadn't really thought about um, in depth until you were just bringing it up. But the idea that at some point it's almost like an inherent, I don't know who I'm talking to anymore and I can't discern what's real from not in that relationship and then how invested am I? Like it's 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 almost like if I don't know it's a real relationship, why do I care, right? Why why do I really want to put the time and energy in? I also love the concept of like, if, and I think you brought it up, I don't think enough people realize this fact too, that if you're missing information, right? Or if you have information, but you're not using it because you don't get it, like you're just not going deep enough. It's almost like this error of omission. Like you didn't read, like I gave you everything, but you didn't read it or you chose somehow to ignore it or something other agent chose to ignore it for yeah. you. Did that release you like from the obligation to actually know it? And I think it ends up tying back to a question we're going to have to answer here eventually, I think, which is like, who's responsible? So underpinning all of this, right, is this kind of legal responsibility. Who's the practicing clinician? Who's responsible for what's actually happening? And how do you have ownership over that. If if you end up being responsible, you kind of have to own everything that sits underneath it and actually understand what those decisions are. I think we've talked about it from a lot of different angles, but I don't think anybody's come up with anything like a solution that I understand. No, I, I think you're you're totally right. I, I think a lot about everyone expects AI just to spread, you know, everyone's just going to download these tools and start using them. But the responsibility piece, especially in the absence of, clear, of, of a clear regulatory framework, um, that's a big deal. Um, because at the end of the day, without clear regulations, um, who's ultimately responsible? Usually it's the clinician or the, the practice or the health system. And if these tools are imperfect, that's a big risk to be taking on. So um, I think the responsibility piece is a really big piece and um, one that I'm not sure um, when we'll get some movement in one direction or another. But right now, you know, these these tools largely are in this kind of um, in between regulatory space where, I don't know, the FDA is supposed to regulate some of these, but the FDA doesn't necessarily have the authority to regulate everything and may not want to regulate many of these tools and um, yeah, it's a really interesting time from that perspective. I think defining who, or to put it more simply, who's holding, who's left holding the bag when there's a problem, that's a big deal. Yeah.